The following program deals with a controversial, controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Too many Kirby drawings, and Ben is on the run, ladies and gentlemen. He is on the run. Be on the lookout for a six foot. Is Ben six three? Six foot three, uh, bald man with a um, Cincinnati Reds hat on. Whoa! <laughs> black black hoodie, and then he's back. I was gonna say we lied to you. You know, bit, we said Ben was gonna show up this week, and you know. <laughs> Oh, wait, but here he is. <laughs> now fix your mic. <laughs> uh -oh. We can't hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, my gosh. What? Like, all of a sudden, everything on my computer just went blank. Like, just completely shut off. Wow. Yeah, it was super weird. Like, all of a sudden, I saw your your uh, camera go off, and I was like, kind of like, okay, maybe he has to go up and get something before we start, which is not <sighs> typical Ben. And then all of a sudden, he leaves the stream. I was like, kind of like, oh shit, what happened to him? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That was that was weird. You, you just wanted to make an entrance. You know, uh, don't lie yeah. to everyone. I know. I'm super egotistical. I love, <laughs> I love making myself look good. <laughs> So you're probably uh, the least egotistical I've ever met. <laughs> but you know, we can get this party started now since since uh Oh, oh I love it. since Red Hood is here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh my, now it's a real oh, party. Oh my gosh, Joe cut his hair too. Look at all you guys cutting your hair. High and tight, baby. Uh, I was gonna say it would be Brian's turn hey, next, what's up? but that's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> not anytime hey, soon. You see, you see my million dollar Griffey I pulled last night, bro. <laughs> nice, nice, bro. And what about my, fuck? Uh, I got denied. No fuck face tonight. Look at that. I was gonna. That's what I was asking. Okay. The <laughs> black square. Oh, damn. Got so, a, so Andy Johnson rookie. So then nice. that would be the Marvel censored one, right? If yeah, it, black if it's square. Black, yeah. If it's yeah. black, okay. The cream in the clear, right? The androstein dion <laughs> steroids. I don't, think, I don't think Sheffield was. I think he was just. He he took the cream in the clear. I don't think he did. He did. He took the. He admitted it. I swear to God, you can look it up. Cream and clear. He put it under his tongue. Took it. Swear. Swear to God, I, I love Gary Sheffield. Know. I love Gary Sheffield, bro. I like, don't I'm telling know. you, <laughs> I'm telling you, like I was a doctor, right? Sheffield was his nephew. Like I even follow Vance Lovelace because he was a friend of theirs. That all three of them got arrested in in with in Tampa. Yep. Right, dude. When, when like, Sheffield I mean, was I like followed, sixteen. Gary Sheffield, 1987 Gatorade Player of the Year. Like I had that in Faces in the Crown, Sports Illustrated. Like I was a huge fucking fan. Like I'll, I'll take you down the history there, man. You know, like I didn't. So know when that. he when he said, "Yeah, I took the cream in the clear," I was like, "Man, like, bro, are you serious, man?" Because he quietly had like Hall of Fame stats, man. I don't, I don't think he needed it. He had a great swing and everything, man. Pissed me off. Yeah. yeah. Well, his, his kids, son, his, his kids coming up. Yeah. He's supposed to be a stud too. Yeah, Roger right. Clemens, motherfuckers, dude. All of them taking drugs, dude. Except Nolan Ryan. You know. Yep. Nolan Ryan was a freak of nature, my friend. I finally have to watch that documentary. It's good. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It's good. 74 Live at the beginning of the show, you guys. Hit those thumbs up. That really helps us uh, as the show moves on in the next couple hours. 
bring more people in the chat, get more people to recognize the show, and shout out to Mrs. Horsecock Express with the four ninety nine super chat. One of the OGs, one of the OG greats, Mrs. Horsecock. Is that Express. the rare one? Yeah. Isn't that the second print? Six. Six print. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's the rare uh, one. Yes. Is it six print? Yes. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I think it's like what six and nine. That are super rare. Oh, uh, I bet you it's the ninth one that's hard to find. No, I remember the the hot pink one being the rare one, but I could be wrong. Oh. Yeah, it's I... hot pink. Yeah, it's hot pink. Sick print. Nice. Sick, sick. I I don't remember. <laughs> like I once I finished collecting all fourteen, I was like kind of like I'm not going down the foreign rabbit hole. I, I'm I'm happy here. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have got the list. Hi Ben. Written by the one and only Ben Stein. And I want to say right off the bat, Ben, thank God you're back, brother. Because writing yeah, that list is a <laughs> tough thing to do. I don't know how you do it, man. You did it on yeah. purpose, dude. You said, you need me. See, you need <laughs> me. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, first of all, you guys, uh, I appreciate you guys a ton. You didn't have to... I, I told them last week, I was like, you can do if you want to, or you can just skip a week and be and do whatever. And they're like, no, no, we want to do it. I'm like, okay, go hmm. have at it. Um, so I thought you guys, guys did a great job. I appreciate you guys. Um, Thanks. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was chilling in DC. Um, you know, they were going to invite me to the Capitol for the inaugural or for the uh, state of the union, but they I, found I out that you didn't like Kirby. Were, were you gonna speak yeah. or what, bro? Yeah, no, man. I was gonna, I was gonna start shouting so I could get arrested. It was, it, it was gonna be fun, but I decided against it because you know I didn't really want a felony on my on my record. But sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, so Congress didn't ask you to speak. So no, I mean they did, but I was like, eh, that's all right. Okay. That's all right. As a representative of the comic community. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are, are we live right now? Fucking A, 87. Yeah. What the fuck? It's a good thing I didn't talk about anybody in the chat. Dude. <laughs> Hold on. Let, let, me see, let me see who's in here, man. Let me start some shit here. Uh, There's a lot of good peoples in the chat tonight. 92 of you watching live Hey, what's right up, now. Ronnie? Ronnie's in the house. Fun house. Uh -huh. Patrick, AOA, love AOA. Up the downs back. Hell yeah. We're going to get, get, tro get trolled all night, baby. <laughs> Give it to us. All the way up in there. <laughs> Richie Anything and I have say Ryan. is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God up the down is here so he can correct everything we say that is wrong. Fuck yeah. We, that's why we love the chat, baby. Down the up. <laughs> Down me up. <laughs> Richie and I had a uh, uh, Ronnie on on Spec Media this past Monday. Oh yeah, Ro uh, Ronnie made his first appearance on the community YouTube. trying to trying to figure out if it's a cameo <laughs> or a first full. <laughs> but uh, no, he was on there for we, where were we at? Like number three or four, Aaron, and then he stayed on. And then uh, just to let you guys know, we're having a appreciation giveaway for getting us uh, Spec Media to 800 subscribers shit we're almost halfway to 900 like within a week wow. so 10 days so thank you guys man you guys are amazing so we're gonna have three giveaways on monday um the first two will be coming from me and aaron and then um the third one's gonna be coming from ronnie and ronnie's gonna be on the show as a special guest so make sure you guys are tuned in 8 8 p.m pacific standard time spec media youtube channel Hell yeah. Hey, I'm just playing up the down, but like, you know, we can take it, so you can take it. You're going to jab? We're going to jab right back, bro. <laughs> you know? That's we love, we love, we love our we love our fans, bro. But sometimes the fans get a little honorary. Got to, you know, you know, start charging. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love you, Hood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, you know how we do this. Let's get it started. Our Woe Book of the Week. Whoa. 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 Yeah. That's good. Pearl. Everybody talking about Pearl getting optioned and all that fun stuff. And But we'll put a Pearl book on the list this week. But as the Woe cover of the week, this beautiful Tula Lote cover. 
too bad they ruined it with that big red Jinx world and red box and Jesus. Way to ruin it. Yeah. Um, this one was submitted by who, who I say this was submitted by Bada Boom. Is that who that was submitted by? What is the date? What's the date today? Today is the eighth, my mm-hmm. friend. Eighth. Eighth. Okay, yeah. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at it's, the it's wrong. 2020, it's 2024. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Time flies yeah, when you're getting old. Man. Bada Boom. Yes. Bada Boom. Yes. 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 Um, yeah, I yeah. looked at the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so this was sent over by Bada Boom. What is the uh, what is the pink? What uh, like on her face? Is that like smoke? What what is? It looks like tattoo, like a black light tattoo, maybe because it's it's yeah, but, know, but it's, it's, it's yeah, it's going off her shoulder. So oh, yeah, it's, it's, space it's, jizz. It's it's an aura. It's an aura. It's a person's ah. aura. <laughs> I don't know. I'm it almost looks it. like tattoo because you know how people will get tattoos of like their bones as going up like this, and then she has a little tattoo here. It yeah. looks good though. Like that yeah. face is really well done. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a photo at first. Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis is publisher, right? Uh, yeah. Has yes. anybody actually yes. read this? No, I own I mean, it. I haven't read it. Haven't read it. Not this this cover. I own the cover A. Well, we can't. We can't just have one. Whoa, cover of the week ever. So. We got a new one on another one on the list with this nice house on the lake. The uh Robert Hack cover or variant. Is this for issue one? Yeah, issue one. This is issue one. Did you even know that this I no. never even knew that this variant I, was out there? I had no idea. I was idea. gonna say no, I had I, I had never seen this. <laughs> I, I saw it and I was like, what is that? Is it like a second series or something? And I was like, no, that's like literally the first issue. Like, I had no idea that this book existed. By the way, you guys, this book is fucking amazing. The The read on this book is very, very, very good. If you haven't read it, read it. Um, I have to revisit it. I know Dino's like, Dino's like a really big Robert Hack fan. Um, this one's gorgeous, though. This one looks like... I don't know about you guys, but it looks like something like straight out of like Tombstone or something like like that's what it feels like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good call. Like Is this that. a store variant? Could I have be. no idea. I don't know where this came from. I'm assuming it must be. Yeah, I don't think I don't know. I, mean, I there was a lot of covers for this book, but uh, I don't remember this being like a ratio. Could be wrong. Hard stop. That one's gorgeous though. Yeah. Yeah. I have to find out now. I was gonna, I was gonna throw like a because of you know because of the State of the Union thing or whatever. I was gonna put like an America book, like in like a you know something with the USA flag, and the one that actually I really thought about and I didn't realize, um, it's probably, I mean it's probably a book that like we should all have is the, from the '90s the Supergirl run. It went to issue eighty, the last issue. Which is an homage to like Superman, like twelve or fourteen mm-hmm. from like the Golden Age Superman, where like the flags behind her, and I think it's like a John Romita Senior cover. It's gorgeous. Like it's, I think it's way under, like underappreciated, to be honest. Yeah, but I didn't put it, it on there. And it is a story variant. I just found it. I don't know. Love, love uh, Biden and Trump either or or hate either or watching them go at it during this is hilarious <laughs> so i don't really like to talk politics but those guys are literally going after each other so it's pretty funny to watch yeah it's it's always fun having a couple uh you know guys from the nursing home <laughs> duke it out, duke it out. <laughs> yeah one is pale battle. the other one's orange <laughs> they're gonna yeah, start they're they're gonna start using their little their little canes with the with the tennis balls at the end. <laughs> the walkers. <laughs> yep. <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> uh well that gives us our blow book of the week. Oh that blows. Hey that fat cop. Blows. Yeah, fat cop. Okay. <laughs> Look at that cover with the guts coming out on it. Look at that baby. Whoa, is that crackhead baby? Is that crackhead? Is that the crack, oh. crack baby? 
It, it kind of uh, looks like it, doesn't it? That might be Dude, crack that's baby. That's fucking awesome, bro. Okay, we gotta find out. Um, this actually we're just down came, the rabbit this, hole with crackhead baby. This just came out like two days ago. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. It's like, yeah, it's like brand new. It's a, it's just a graphic novel. But, dude, I can't even figure out what's going on. I thought at first, like, I looked at the baby, and I was like, is that like from like Rick and Morty? I couldn't really tell. But then, it, it, I know the the cop car that ran over the kid. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's being like cut in half. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> and there's McDonald's in the background. I, I'm so confused. What was that comic that called the Crack Baby comic called that the homie threw uh, bought and sent to me? Crack oh, Baby. Uh, was it called Crack Baby? Didn't we talk about it on the Almost Ten? There it is, right there. Or? Yes, one of my oh, all-time God. favorite yeah. comics. Shout out! I forget who sent it to me, but if you're in the chat mention it and i'll never forget it again uh this was so, sent to me it's so did, awesome did he ask the artist if he could borrow the crack baby and put him in his title didn't that what it looks like cop? right that's what it looks like right it's the same it's the same fucking kid dude yeah He's okay, so, it, it's, it's aged up right so i'm, I'm gonna put totally this on the drama, drama alert bro <laughs> i'm totally getting trashed like everybody loves this what is going on? <laughs> this is a great book, dude. I would pick it up, read that cop, it, bro. Is here, the cop it, badge giving you the finger? Because it's what it looks like. <laughs> or it's a big dick <laughs> with a condom on. <laughs> here, Ben, take, take one of these and then tell me what you think. <laughs> What's the synopsis on this, man? Uh, it says this here, so weird, fat cop oh, never boy. passes up a possible grift. Oh, it sounds like Renovision. A chance to use excessive force or pit stop at any chain restaurant he passes. He chafes when forced to take a new partner, Pete Rick, to keep him on the up and up. Even when he lucks into a heroic deed, he manages to do so repulsively. Yeah, that really sounds like it. Uh, but when Fat Cop uncovers a child slavering operating out of the local Trader Joe's, he may have met his match on the rep rep reprehensibility scale. If he's not careful, it might be a transformative experience that causes him to reconsider his role as a loving partner and father. Damn, that sounds like a pretty crazy <laughs> book. Oh my gosh. I did Fat cop! I no, 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 Fat cop! <laughs> I, had no, I had no idea that that you all were this weird. Fat cop and crack baby. Now on sale at your local LCS. Like I, I thought you guys with your, with your furries were weird, but man, you're going <laughs> furries. Oh, all right. But you, didn't, you, you didn't hear like the you know the phrase of the of the last ten years is like you know let's get weird. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy that dude. <laughs> Moving on. It's still. It's still available on the website. Ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Spec Media, who you need to go sub up to right now by The Dip. Ooh. Ooh. Starting off with Wolverine number one from 2020, the C2E2, John Tyler Christopher negative space variant on By The Dip. Yeah, um, this one held like for a long 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 time i always hate it when books do like hold their value forever and then tank. and then just like yeah and then tank because it it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense um this one held forever for like three years it nine eights were basically like 400 bucks like constantly for three years all the way through last year um it was still high 300s close to 400 um and then this week it sold at a third all-time low for a cgc 98 so for 235 so if you did ever want this like i know like a lot of people hate these negative space yeah. ones but if you did ever want it um now would be the time because it's half of where yeah. it used to be I i've had this book like three times <laughs> so I, I i have it currently now <laughs> so I had to think about it if I still had it or not, but, um, but is this the original COVID book? 
Yeah, like if it's you really one think of them. Of it. It's one of it's one of them, right? Because this was this was released during C two E two, and then everything shut down after that, right? Right, like right after, yeah. Right, like that was the last major con that I can think of that happened before everything shut down. I think you're probably right. Um, was was Emerald City before or after C two E two? I think it was after and i want to say it got canceled they canceled it or did it yeah yes i want I to say remember. so uh, i and thought it was emerald city it... that got canceled no yeah i want to say emerald got can- canceled but this yeah. was released okay. during c2e2 yeah yeah so wasn't there like 1500 numbered and then there was like some weird another 1500 it was the same book came out of the first print there was like some kind of drama during that time no it's it's numbered to 3000 but there's artist okay. proofs as well oh okay but it's labeled like ap out of what 500 or something like that or 3000 100? oh the Is artist it? proofs yeah yeah like okay. it's some okay. low number like i don't remember the exact number interesting with a ser- yeah so these are these are serial numbered to 3000 yep oh you mean it can be done yep uh, i mean it was even a marvel release book and this was four years ago, stupid publishers. <laughs> Give it the program. Yeah. Moving on. Because well, they did multiple. Mm-hmm. Howard the Duck, number one from the 2015 run, which is, of course, the first appearance of Gwenpool. Yeah, so, okay, so when I say first, or when we say first appearance of Gwenpool, this is only if you don't believe that a cover appearance is can be a first appearance. So, um I am one that thinks it can, but I understand I'm also never perfect and never right all the time. So um, <laughs> I know some people don't believe that. So, you know, it's like you can still like you can still have your thought, but you can still understand that this still has some kind of significance. Um, this one, let's see, nine eights of this peaked around 200. It hit its lowest price since 2016. When a CGC nine of eight of this sold for thirty six dollars. Wow! Wow! <laughs> yep. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You guys getting divorced? I'm selling all your books. <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't put it at a dollar start. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even love her. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You know what's so funny? Like, uh, Knife and I found a stack of these at a, at a someone's booth, and they had them marked all at five bucks a piece. And then within wow. that pile, there was like a second print as well. But Ooh, only one. that's a good one. Yeah, nice. but th- they marked the second print at five bucks as well because they had marked all the other ones, and you know they weren't paying attention that closely. So, did so you buy nice. them all? We split them. <laughs> yeah, I bought, I bought one from you. Yee. You bought one for me? Yeah, I think it was on your whatnot. Oh, and, nice. Um, yeah. I, I probably yeah, still yeah. have if I got yeah, it. I had, to, I, had to pre- I had to press it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sell it to you? That Was I like, oh, this is a 98 shoe? No. I, ne- no. I never say that. No. Nah. No, nah, it's all good, baby. Next, we've got Darth Vader number three, the 1 in 25 LaRocca variant. Ooh. Oh man, Comic Man Andy's got to be hurting. <laughs> He's hurting, man. Yeah. Two fifteen raw, one thousand for a CGC nine eight. God damn it. Nine sixes are like three hundred bucks, I think, or something like that. I looked earlier; it was like three hundred or four hundred bucks for a nine six. I was like, kind of like, I was like, this this seems really low for for Doctor Afros. What are the regular it? ones selling for? Just the A cover, the Granov A cover. I saw a low sell of 150 for a CGC 98. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That was a $600 book easy. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what? I think, Richie, you had some da- data on the raw sales, yeah. right? Yeah. So the hard data on the raw sales, Star Wars, uh, Darth Vader 3 cover A, first print. There's a lot of printings of this book. Uh, raw near mint minus or better copies uh, from around this time last year. So February 2023 throughout the summer, uh, September 2023, 
was selling for an average fair market value of 100 plus with a high sale raw of 202.50. Now uh, there's multiple sales from January through this month down to $65 uh, dollars as an average FMV at or about down 35%. What about the LaRocca? Do you have any data on this book on the LaRocca one in twenty five? I didn't I didn't even know we were putting this mm -hmm. on. So yeah. yeah oh, I have GPA open. Give me a second. Two hundred and fifty yeah, raw. Yeah, this is this one G's uh entry. Wasn't it Andy that that like bought this at the con and then put a seatbelt on it when he was taking it at home? Yeah, he bought one was for two grand. Yeah. <laughs> two grand yes, sir. for a nine eight. That's he did. He bought. He paid two grand for it for nine eight. I, if I remember correctly, I, I want to oh, say it, that was I, in Baltimore, right? Yeah, yeah. I it might have been even more than that too, like twenty four hundred, twenty two hundred, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, fuck. Andy's too nice for that to happen to him. Yeah. Yeah, that's not. Cool. Man, well, buy the dip, baby. Buy the dip. Moving on. That's where you look for a little kid, right? Pretty bird, pretty bird. <laughs> <laughs> right, get your money back. <laughs> Finally, on By the Dip, we've got Marvel premiere, issue number 47, first appearance of Scott Lang, Ant-Man, 720 and a 9, CGC 9.8. Oof. Yeah, so as Brian was uh, alluding to, First Scott Lang as the second Ant Man, CGC nine eight from like I, I I'm trying to stay when I'm doing at least when I when I do the list on Mondays, and I help out Ben on Fridays. I try to I'm really trying hard to stay away from those pandemic numbers. Like I I, I kind of was uh, talking about a few weeks ago. So about this time last year, throughout the summer of last year, this was selling a fair market value, average CGC nine eight on an average of $1,029 with a high sale of $1,200. Now, for the last two months, there was two sales, but there just isn't a lot after that or before that. Selling for an average fair market value on two sales, $721 down at or about 30%. The low sale of that, $631 this month. Jeez. So, you know, there's a couple things to this right so you could sit back out the 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 pandemic numbers and like stun has that 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 dry erase board next to him when he did the simple math you take out this <laughs> year and you know like i love that but you I know, love a couple it. things with, a couple things with that book that book was gaining heat because of all the movies eventually coming and how ant-man was going to be a big part of the MCU and all that. Now there's none of that heat. So what you have is a a key Bronze Age book that possibly will or will not have Scott Lang uh, as a prominent figure moving forward. So, you know, those nine eights, what was the highest on it, Richie? Like a couple of the grand? Highest, in a nine yeah, eight? it's like twelve hundred dollars uh high sale. What did I say? Uh, what 12, 1200 even, but it averaged out. There was a ton of sales during like, like Joe was talking about averaged mm. out about a hundred, uh, $1,029 down 30% average 721 CGC nine, eight of this book at a low sale, six thirty six $631 that sold at the beginning of this month. And I want to add to, to what Joe's saying. Joe makes a lot of sense. And I agree with him. The thing is, is they didn't kill Scott Lang in that movie. So I don't know what, honestly, that movie was friggin' terrible. Okay. It was they cheesy. It. Like, <laughs> as Brian would say, it was cheesy to the highest levels. Um, but uh, I like Paul Rudd, and I think Ant Man, uh, uh, Scott Lang as Ant Man with Paul Rudd is actually a really good character. Me too. And he brings a lot of, a lot of positivity and humor to the MCU. So I don't think they're done with him yet. I hope not. Yeah. I, mean, I, I gotta see more magic tricks. I mean, that's the only reason why I keep on watching. Well, you, that character thrived with the supporting cast, and when you took away uh, like Ti and and um, I forgot the other crazy crazy motherfuckers with him, the uh, Hispanic the Hispanic guy, the storyteller. 
Oh, I love him, dude. He's such a good actor. Right. So, like, that all worked, and, you know, and they took away his supporting cast, and it was just... Well, that that uh, that movie was supposed to be dark, and they messed up. If you want that movie to be dark, you kill him at the end. Yeah. You know? And yeah. you don't let yeah. Kang die. It's vice versa. They really messed that up in a bad way. Absolutely. Yeah. Good call. Even though I love Paul Rudd, and I don't want to see him... I don't want to see Ant, uh, Scott Lang, Ant-Man die but you know that's how you make that dark so it is what it is and then they fucked up janet van dyne's hair dude you know what i mean that that just made it worse her hair looked like shit and and uh, you know it just made her look not pretty dude so that kind of isn't she like 70 years old yeah right (laughs) she man she's a beautiful beautiful person beautiful woman man of 70 77 years old and she no 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 i'm not talking about her no, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just adding it. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing or whatever. I'm just saying Michelle Pfeiffer looks good for her. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm Hell not yeah. talking about Michelle Pfeiffer. I was talking about uh, the other one from um, Lost or whatever. What's her name? Evangeline Lilly. Yeah, Evangeline Lilly. They oh, that's her not. Hair, that's dude. not Janet. That's not Janet. I mean, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're talking about the Wasp. Uh, the second. Yeah, wasp. the Wasp. Uh, yeah, I forgot her name. I don't think she's 77. No, I said she I was uh, 70, 70. I said I, she was I don't think she's I don't think she's 70. Fucking Michelle oh, okay. Pfeiffer turned 70, bro? I don't think she's 70. Uh, Evangeline Lilly. That's who you're talking about. Yeah, that character. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. She's close. 65. Okay, oh, wow. 65. I was going to say still looks great. Looks cuz I was thinking like, you know, like Batman Returns would have been like 94, 93, so it was like 30 years ago. So, I'm thinking of Scarface. I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm pretty, uh, that's okay. You still got a problem? Well, you guys, Another choir load. <laughs> that is by the dip this week. Make sure you guys go check out that's by okay. the dip on Spec Media. Him and uh, and Aaron have been doing some great content over there, uh, doing some card content, comic book content, like usual. Make sure you guys go sub up. They are very close to a thousand subs, eight hundred and forty-three subs, and uh, they need to get. Oh wow, work. we're at eight forty-three uh, now. Yep. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> so, oh, I'm excited because yeah. I have some Bowman draft to open, and some Star Wars Sapphire. And you know Ooh. what's cool, Aaron? To add yeah. to that, I lo- I finally figured out how to put both of our IG lives and start it with the Streamyard. So if you want to go into the Streamyard. And break cards like you will. You, I'll show you. It's super easy, and boom, it'll go right to your IG live. Oh, nice, sweet. Yeah, I'll have to boom. clean up my area. Yeah, I'm gonna, so. I'm gonna go on with you guys. I'm gonna break some stuff, dude. Cool. Yeah. 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 What, like a window? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> some, some junk wax, man. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, good shit. All right, let's move on to the almost ten. <laughs> Starting off with Space Ghost, the ash can that was a special ash can at Comics Pro uh, that I didn't know about until now. This thing is gorgeous, right? Yeah, dude. Right. It looks really good. Um, yeah, so this one's selling for like 25 to 30, but there's been, actually been several sales. It's, I mean, um, when does the when does this series actually come out? A couple weeks? March. Like uh march is it hold on let me let me look we actually like had whole... uh nick barucci on beyond wednesdays uh tuesday he was on and he talked about this and how excited they were for it so pretty cool all right let's see here um, so, is this, so is the series gonna be like coast to coast or is it or is it like no, it's like real Space Ghost type stuff. Hey, oh, Parker, run it, run it has the same May books 1st. on the list. May 1st. What? What did he say? Um, What's he, this dude talking about? I don't know. He said uh, Renna has the same books on his well, list. Well, Renna's a content thief. They're all they're content thieves. Of course they're going to steal content. That's what they do, you guys. Remember, snakes like to snake. But this is a really good one that uh, you can pick up only on eBay now. I wonder how many they printed of these. That's a good question. But I yeah, will say that, that 
Um, so do you guys like the or like the basic Space Ghost, or do you like the Coast to Coast better? Coast to Coast. Coast to Coast. Well, Dude. if it's a show, it, I like it better. But if it's a comic, Brack, Brack, I want it. Brack, yeah. Brack is literally like my favorite character, like ever. Like I, I bought the DVDs and everything with, with Brack. I mean, it just like how how does he not have a, a, a comic? Mm, oh yeah. So here we go. This is uh, Space Ghost right here. It says. Greed and corruption flourish in the darkness between Burn. stars, with territories of the Galactic Federation spread far and wide across the vastness of space. Pirates and hijackers ransack the distant colonies and cr with cruel disregard for the innocent scientists living within them. Yet there is a cosmic vigilante who met, meets out, mets out, meets out, what's that? M -T -M -E -T -E -S? M-E-T-E-S? Medis? I don't even know what the hell that is. I've never even heard that word. Out justice throughout the galaxy, bringing vengeance to those who prey upon the defenseless. Some say he's a policeman who has abandoned the structures of law. Others say he's a phantom, a sole survivor of a war-torn planet. And those who have survived his wrath claim he is more force of nature, able to bend the very elements of creation to decimate this his enemies. They call him Space Ghost, and his ventures begin here. See, if it's a comic, I'd rather have that. If it's a show, I, like, I want them to bring back Space Ghost Coast to Coast. And you know what? If you love that Space Ghost Coast to Coast stuff, this is one of the things that Nick talked about on the industry show on uh, Tuesday, on Beyond Wednesdays. This comic, this Michael Cho comic, is his favorite cover of all of them. And it kind of has that old school cartoon feel to it, right, that they use for Coast to Coast. Um, yeah, so... The Brian the, and I, I didn't realize that there was two ash cans. Um, so there's the this one here, the, the one that you've got, but the one from Comics Pro is that Baron's one. Oh, it is! Wow. Yep, yep. Hold on. Yeah, the Baron's one. This is the this is the one from Comics Pro. That's the com. Yeah, it, it it's still. I mean, it it still's got it in the corner, the right hand corner. It says ash can, just like mm -hmm. I like this the one you're showing too, but. I like this. That's tight. Oh, that's cool. I like this one the best, man. I think that's my, yeah, well. Actually, nice my guys. favorite cover is the G is the is the leak the J Lee. I love that. But this cover is oh. gorgeous. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So. But I do remember watching the original Space Ghost cartoon as well. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this comes out in May, May first on sale date. So there we go. All Ooh. right, good shit. What is this selling for right now in the secondary? The Ash, the the Comics Pro Ash Can, not this one. Uh, like twenty five to thirty. Okay. Do you know what the other Ash Can is selling for? Uh, or maybe oh has it, has it hit yet? I wonder if this one's hit yet. It's like tw like twenty. Okay. Okay. Shout out. Look or at less. that. Spec Media with the uh, super chat. You gotta love that. Richie, we missed you, Ben. You missed you, buddy. Missed you, buddy. <laughs> it's All like right. Christmas, you know. We're just gonna mutually exchange everyone twenty dollars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, except, except for you could be like me, and it's now March, and I still haven't sent your guys' Christmas presents out yet. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's funny you say that. I hate shipping too. I owe everybody everything. <laughs> I have it all. I have it all. It's all boxed up and everything, but it's got about this much dust on it <laughs> I don't even want to it, talk it's because we it. celebrate christmas in july is, yeah. is where, where it's really at yeah all right next on the almost 10 the fog issue number one this is the zoo or zoo one in 25 it just came out from uh massive publishing even though it says sumerian I always, again, I, I want to get I want to get the guys who run massive on the industry show so I could just find out what is the deal with between massive Sumerian whatnot? Like, what is going on there? Oh yeah, but would what, Sumerian be the parent company? <sighs> yeah, is it is it kind of like um, uh, what's the like the there's like a secondary publisher for one of oh. those other small ones, kind of like Black Label is uh, DC, but oh like um like Boom Studios and Kaboom for the kids line, yeah, something like that. I mean. Yeah. Who knows? Well, um, well, this is uh just came out too. So, brand new book. 
Nice VOR yeah. cover. Um, this is a creepy cover. I think this is a super creepy cover. Um, it's I, I would tend to think that there's not that many of these. Um, there was only a couple sales. They sold right at ratio, so right at 25. Um, but this one seems like this one would be tough to find, uh, you know, going forward. Like, I feel like this is one in two years. If you go to look for it, you're not going to find it on yeah. eBay. Yeah. West Coast Big Rob says it looks like Sharon Tate's about to eat it. And it does look like oh, Sharon man. Tate. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's creepy, man. <laughs> Damn. Whew. Yeah, this this could be a, a super ghost in the future, that's for sure. Is it selling well? Uh right at ratio, so right at twenty five. There you get in get in while you can if you like this one. All right, next. Oh, I love this. Go Naked, issue number one from Last Gasp Comics in nineteen ninety three. And as you can see, this is just this is right up my alley, independent, cool, fun stuff that you never know what you're gonna find in you know these type of comics. And this one is going kind of crazy for a special group of creators. One of those being Matt Groening. Matt right Groening. There. Yep. Not only that, Art Spiegelman's in this. So this must be like a like a anthology type book that they did with all these different creators. I mean, look at all these. Were most of those guys under Robert Williams? Um, hmm. Who else is on here? The guy that came up with all the uh, the look of Pee Wee's Playhouse is on is in here. Wow. Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah, check this out. Let me see if I can find this. Why don't you oh, take a picture of the last one, guy? Oh yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Painter. Yep. So artists and writers include Charles Burns, Gary Painter, Mark Bayer, Bruno Richard, Goji, Goro Fuji, George Hansen, J.D. King, Wayne White, Casimiris, I'm not even going to try, Savage Pencil, Ed Nukes, Jocko, uh, Art Spiegelman, and Matt Groening. Cover artist is Gary Painter. So Gary Painter did the cover art for this. And That's as you can wild. see, it is. Yeah, it's kind of small. It's a crazy book, but... Hey. Yeah, there you go. Early Matt Groening stuff. Huh. I want to see cool. what it is. I'm gonna, I want to look that and see if I can find the Matt Groening work in there. I haven't seen it yet. But everybody's going crazy for these books. I think uh, Blue Green kind of sparked a little little jump in those books with uh, the long short um, when you guys talked about uh, Wet Number 8 on uh, Long Story Short, right? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we did talk about that. Yeah, yeah, but shout out to you for bringing that up like years ago. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yep, I love those type of things. But I didn't know about the one that Tony had, the first comic. And here's another oh, the, the animation one. Yeah, I've yeah. never heard of that one. Yeah, I say graining, and then it feels weird. But now that Mike Benson says it's pronounced graining, I'll continue to say it like that. I hate messing up people's names. So if you guys ever hear me mess up a name. And you know how it really is said? Let me know. Don't fuck with me either, because I'll find you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Wait, first before we move on, how much is this selling for when it sells? Sixty dollars. Wow, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, I would buy that for sixty, easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder yep. if Tommy Lee used to have this. Who knows? With his with his song, "Get Naked." Remember that? Mm -hmm. no, 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 I'm not a Tommy Lee fan. <laughs> Moving on. She Dragon, a one shot from Image in 2006. It's an actual Eric Larson one shot, and that is a killer fucking cover, decapitation cover that needs to go into the Beyond Wednesday's Discord decapitation area. Jesus, is that in there? We got to put that in there. Yeah, I don't. For some reason, I don't ever remember that. I don't ever remember this one either. Like, I'm. I feel like, I feel like there's like a million books out there that I just have, should know that totally. exist. But this yeah. one, I had no, I had no idea that this one ever exists. I didn't know they did a one shot of She Dragon. Um, yeah. But uh, this one sold this week for fifty. It had been selling for like ten or fifteen, and. Now it's selling for fifty. Wow, 
That's a cool cover, man. I've never seen that. At first, when I first saw it, I thought it was like a uh, one of those spoof books. Like the one we have, we have those spoof books on the Almost 10 every once in a while. Yeah. And I totally thought it was a spoof book. Like the Max one we did the other week. Oh, yeah. So, could, that's a cool book. Could it be like a situation where like how people's art tastes have changed over the years that there was a bunch of books that were ahead of its time and like flew under the radar. Mm -hmm. And then people looking back now into whatever time period or finding these books. Shout out to Zabbit. Zabbit says, I have this, which I would expect a hundred percent. He says at one point they were raws were selling for a hundred on this one. So I must've oh, been wow. during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I'm sick. Not. I need to buy this book. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Moving on. Mind the Gap, issue number three, the Scotty Young cover. That is crazy. That's a cool Scotty Young variant, man. Yeah, so I threw this one in here because um, I found this while I was out and didn't really have a chance to put it on here. So this was this one sold a couple weeks ago. Um, but this one is apparently really hard to find. I don't I don't remember this one. This was, I mean, this is 12 years ago. I, yeah. Which is crazy. But um, yeah, so this one sold for $75 raw. Jesus. And it's just, wow. it's just a, I think it's just a B cover. It's not like an incentive or anything like that. I love yeah. this cover. Wow. Yeah. It's fucking awesome, dude. Hell yeah. It's like, you want to see what's in my brain? This is <laughs> what's up, guys. That's yeah. awesome, dude. I think we should do one of these with Joe and see what comes out of his head. Man. <laughs> the Dude, title's Mama. Not, yeah. can, we get, can we get Scotty on the line and do, do a Joe? A Joe pencil sketch? Man, I'm all over the place, man. I got ADD and shit. So it's like, huh? Yeah, for sure, brother. I'm Squirrel. Taking baseball cards and cards. it's gonna be yeah. baseball, <laughs> and then like the Dallas Cowboys coming out on one end, and then yeah. uh, and then Eva, up and down, and, and, and then up Eva, and down, and H E B Eva Long <laughs> Eva Longoria and a banana. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, I told you all about my, my uh, Eva Longoria story, right? With the banana. <laughs> yes, so sir. I was riding my bike. <laughs> I was right. She used to. Her grandma used to live. Uh, Right by my house, and I was riding my bike one time. She was eating a fucking banana, dude, and I slammed my bike into another. <laughs> crashed and shit, dude. Ah! <laughs> it was a true story, too, man. It was fucking awesome, dude. She was like, ah! <laughs> Wow. Anyway, sorry. All right. Wow. Moving on. Bananas. <laughs> 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 That's the code word. Bananas. This one's a big story, big talk right now, and a lot of back rooms on the, our little our little DM rooms. Elvira meets HP Lovecraft issue number one. The Hughes Virgin cover limited to a thousand. Not specifically this one, but the metal one, because all the metals from this cover run were damaged. Um. Yeah, so we can get into we can we can get into that. So first of all, this one is limited to a thousand. Um, these are selling for like fifty dollars on eBay. But if you want this, they are still available on the website for thirty five. So, um, and it's as I checked earlier today, there were still one hundred and thirty of them still available. So if you did not get one, you can still get one. Um, hey, I, I, dude, this just came to me, dude. Okay. You know how you have CGC witnesses, dude? What if you had print run witnesses? Like the guy there at the fucking plant. And said, yep, 1,000. <laughs> he signs his name. <laughs> hey, man, I bet you. Absolutely 1,000. Yeah, I bet you you could pay a, a printer printing company to do that. You know, pay them an extra 500 right. bucks and they'll they'll do it. Right? Certify the, the print count? Mm-hmm. Right? Well, I want to third party counter okay. a third party just... print counter <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty bad where you got to have a guy for a guy for another guy <laughs> just to authenticate shit 
This is yeah. on my on the cover of the year list so far. This is uh, one of the cover of the year choices. It's an awesome as we cover, go. Man. It's fucking yep. beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so Brian mentioned the metal cover. So in all transparency, I did get me one. Um and um I didn't I didn't <laughs> even know that there was a damage issue cuz I never checked my email. So it showed up and then I heard about this. Um I do have it sitting here if you want to see what the damage looks like. Do you want to see what the, what the yeah. damage looks like? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. I've got it. Go, sitting go, here. Go oh. Says, uh, I was trying to just remember. I was trying to figure out what book you had damaged. You're like, can this be pressed? Like asking, trying to ask yeah. Richie and, uh, and Red right, so First of all, yeah. So, first of all, this is a metal cover. Like, it's metal. But look, look how pretty this, this is. Wow. Ooh, oh, wow. That's sick. Nice. Well, wow. Very nice. Nice. Um, all right, so the, the metal portion is is perfectly fine. Um, and I, I, I think even if, like, so it is like, I mean, you can probably hear it, but all right, so the cover is like pasted to the, the front cover of this somehow. Uh -huh. But let me see yeah. if you guys can see this on this corner right here. Yep, I see it. It's folded. I see it. It's yeah. full. So, but there's, I mean, so it's like stuck to the metal. So I, so whoever made these, like whoever put these metal covers on there, they did it before, like they did it with damaged books. Like they, they were like, oh, these are damaged. We don't care. We're going to put oh, the that's covers on Oh, that's fucking genius, bro. Yeah. So you can see it. Um, and it goes through the, it, it goes through the whole, it's on that same corner. It goes through oh, the whole. Wow. Yeah, it's every page. Oh, that's some pussy shit right there, dude. Well, they better Get not the ever reprint them. Put metal on it. They better never reprint them if they sent if they sold out that first set. If they reprint them, they need to send them free to the people that got that first set, or never reprint them. But that way, we know mm -hmm. all of them are damaged. And if we see one, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt the value as much because they put out a they specifically put out an email. Let me go ahead and bring this up. That said, they were all damaged. Jeez. Yeah. So a good point. So my question, Joe or Richie or whoever, can that can that be pressed out with a hammer? Um, so, <laughs> like, if if I was going to Frankenstein it, I would try and um, mm. um, separate it from the metal, yeah. and then press how in the world are you going to do that? Like, it's like, hey, I'm, man, you know, like. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not like the microwave. You can't, you can't, you put this in the microwave, your house going to burn down. I, the, the little hamster wheels already going. I mean, um, he said, he's like saying, take, I would like to take a, yeah, I would like to take a shot at it. You know, so well, I, I mean, I, I can send you, I can send it to you. I mean, I don't, I, I don't really care. I mean, I really just bought it for myself. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really. I'm not. I didn't even buy the rate. The 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 other one at all. I just yeah. wanted this yeah. one. Oh, it's the um, the version. Yeah, the one. Yeah, the rate. The one out of a thousand. I didn't even buy you, that one. You mean like these? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I didn't even buy those. So. Uh, um, yeah. I I always get skeptical about buying metal covers because I never know which ones are gonna pop and which ones are gonna do nothing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I was like, kind of like, I was debating, and I was like, let me just get regular copies. And then when I saw. Yeah. That the normal copies were showing up super minty. I was like, kind of like, oh, sweet. Yeah, they're not replacing them. Uh, basically, what they said in the email if you want them, they're just going to send them out. If they don't hear back from you, they're going to send them out, or you can get your money back for them. Oh, okay. So uh, I, yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm they never not... reprint those. It, that would. Yeah, I'm, I don't see myself sending it back because it honestly, I mean, if I'm displaying it, if I don't grade it, I mean, yeah. When you look at the middle portion of it, it looks perfectly fine. So I don't really care. Um, yeah. And there's only a hundred. I mean, so like when it comes to like entire runs of something being damaged, I think it's actually more weak when they are like, "Oh, we're going to delay it for four months because we want this completely reprinted. We want all these so really nice, nice minty copies going out. Just, just send them out. If they're not, if all of them are not mint, who cares? There's like so. So There's for sure, Ben, like the back, the the back side going forward up until the metal, like mm -hmm. I could press that out easy, right? And then, then I'd be fucking with the front. That's how yeah. I would do it. 
so i mean the, yep. so i guess that's the question is i mean you know can you when you do a press on that and you put a little bit of heat is that going to is that going to separate it from the metal um so it, from my point of view cuz i don't have a lot of experience uh with metal covers because uh i just don't i i just don't um but uh by looking at that now i kind of understand it more from when we were talking in um you know a few days ago in the chat so yeah that heat and pressure it should fix everything in the interior pages all the way through that splash but the, my two questions are does it break color any of it and my yeah. second is is how heavy is that cardstock on the covers that's my so second question on the so on the let's see here. kernel paper like all right so it is not like so it means a dynamite book so you would tend to think it's that crappy paper but yeah can you hear that? Yeah, it's like it's cardstock. It's fairly, it's fairly thick. It's not, it's not hey. cheap. Um, Joe, I'm thinking warm it up and then use the ball bearing on, you know. No, I um, you don't think so. I, I, I'm I've thinking said too, I've, I've said too much. Shout out, Lord um, well, Dan's comics. <laughs> but who, like I said, whoever put them together, um, is just is crazy. Like. The fact that they literally, it, it's not that they got damaged in shipping. They literally just took the book and were like, hey, I'm going to go and put that metal cover on a damaged book to start with. Like they didn't even, they didn't even consider anything else. But um, like I said, I, I'm not, I'm not really that concerned with it. I don't, I'm not that much of a snob. Um, you know, if it's for me, then I don't really care that much. Um, and again, there's only a hundred of them. So it's not like, it's not like I'm really that concerned. Oh, so the, you're saying that the the printer that put on the metal cover threw it in the microwave first? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know. I know. Ju I understand where Joe's coming from about the secrets of the presser. I totally. Understand yeah, we that. don't talk about Fight Club here, bro. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I I can see a path. Put it that way. I can see a you, path. To you, you remember when they put a hit out on Bruce Lee for teaching the Kwai Low, bro? You know. I don't want to have to have have you in the chamber there. Richard. Was that Bruce Lee or <laughs> was that Bruce Lee or yeah. Uma Thurman? <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah. All right. Next, we have got this is a good one. Space Usagi. This is from Volume Two, Issue Number One, Ashcan, the Yellow Variant, from 1993, Mirage Studios. This has got to be a tough, freaking piece of Usagi comic them to buy fine man I, I like how they put ash can uh -huh. edition like not 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 ash can ash space can yeah <laughs> like, the, like a smoke like three different words yeah um it's i again this is another one that i did not know existed um i have no idea how rare this is but i would tend to think this is really rare uh it, it's it's sold, it, sold for five hundred dollars raw. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah, early nineties ash can. Those early nineties ash cans are some of them can be crazy. Whoa, it, what just happened there? What? All right, we're back. Yeah, those early ninety ash cans would be crazy. Oh, I pr I pressed the wrong okay. button. It, it's it's spelled Ashcan like that because of the direct Japanese to English translation. Oh, uh, I'm making that up. I, I <laughs> <again>. <laughs> you, know, hey, you know what? A year ago, ye, I would have believed you. Now I don't even believe you. <laughs> I'm not Japanese, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you all look the same. No, oh, dang. <laughs> Talk about getting canceled. <laughs> Can you get canceled if you're one of yourself, dude? Like, you know what I mean? I'm kicking my own ass. It's okay. <laughs> I'm making fun of myself. <laughs> Jesus. Can IG's canceling everybody, man. You see that shit? That's anyway. Yeah, disavow. Yeah, disavow. <laughs> disavow. Oh. I need a sign for that now. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to 
Black Cat number two, the Mark Brooks San Diego Comic Con Anti Venom Virgin variant from 2019. Um, yeah. Oof. There's a Carnage one, there's a Venom one, and there's an Anti Venom one. Uh, I didn't, I don't, once again, I didn't know this, <laughs> this Anti Venom was out there, but okay. Um, <laughs> literally, I, that's all. I, this is what you're happens so, when you you're so excited about this book. <laughs> I'm not excited about Girl. this, but this one sold for a hundred dollars raw. So like when we when we like think about like some of these stupid store variants and stuff, where like those books suck. Some of them, some of them, they always keep selling. Like I don't understand. It's it's because you got probably some other podcasters like hyping up this crap, and you know it's just hey, it's like, Mark Brooks though. I know. mean. I love Mark it, Brooks, but this isn't the best Mark Brooks. It's yeah, good. that's true. I mean, if you have one of the set, you have to get the rest, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I wonder how many of them there they're out they're out there. How much you say a hundred dollars raw for this? That's hundred dollars raw. And it was a San Diego con variant. Twenty nineteen too, which is a long time ago. All right, next we have Kaya, issue number one, the West Craig 1 in 50 from Image Comics, 2022, last year, two years ago. I feel like I remember this book vaguely just because of the, it looks like um, something from like Sin City or something like that. Yeah. It, but I, it reminds me. Yeah, it looks like it, a Sin City book. It reminds me of the parody book, uh, the Radioactive Hamsters. It reminds uh, me yeah, of Dark Knight the, Returns cover, kind of, with Sin City. Yeah. I can see that now. Um, yeah. Oh. Nine, uh, all I know is a 9 8, CGC 9 8 of this sold for 250 this week. Whoa. So somebody. What? Wow. Somebody must want it. Yeah. Wow. Has anybody <laughs> read that series, the Kaya series? I wonder how many number ones were, there were. It wasn't number one, so. Could yeah, the guy that bought it. Hey, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> You're all great. Oh, good, man. Hey, nice. I think it's a dope cover, that's for sure. It's a really, really good cover. Even the image symbol and the West Craig, and then the, the way the trade is through the – they did a really good job designing it. Yeah. I love covers that the whole cover is designed well, not just the art. Yeah. So, good shit. Oh, so it is an homage to Sin City. Mm-hmm. That's what people in the chat are saying. Yeah. Well, they... even I, w- I was going to say, I think even the font with Wes Craig, like with the, the artist and or the writer and artist and stuff, I think is what maybe triggered the Sin City look for me. Yep. Yeah. I can. Yeah. All right. And moving then... along. Punisher number one from 2011. This is the Brian Hitch second print sketch variant. Which is a really good cover, but the something about his face just makes me like instantly look at his keep looking at his face. I don't know what it is. He looks. I different. don't know. I, did, I I should have looked at the color version because I'm looking at the sketch version and it looks terrible to me. Yeah, yeah the face. I it's agree. the face, man. Well, the face and his left hand. I, what is he doing? Is he gonna grab his own face? Like, yeah. I don't think is that doing? is. Is that supposed to be his hand? I can't look. <laughs> I don't no, know. You, you can see the thumb, like on the skull. The thumb of what? His it's thumb? Like, uh, it, like no, no, not his this thumb. This is supposed to be it's a like point a hand of view. That's like, so somebody's trying to pet him, like he's, he's like oh. trying to grab his shoulder. I guess I don't know. Grab the mm-hmm. gun. And yeah, that's a weird cover, away. man. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This so no. this. <laughs> <laughs> this sold for a hundred dollars raw. Whoa, and it's a second printing oh. variant. Sketch variant, not a one in twenty five. It just must be super low printed. Wow. Or everybody was like, "This cover sucks. Throw it in the trash." <laughs> well, I still have first prints. That's a hard pass for me, Ben. I'm not gonna buy something for a hundred <laughs> bucks pass. to put it in the trash. That's for sure. Jesus. <laughs> Some, somebody was drinking too much. Oh, I, I have never seen that before. I'm gonna fucking buy it. <laughs> 
Mm, I think uh, <laughs> Zach and uh, Crane dry, uh, draw Punisher the best. Yeah, I like Zach. I like when they did those remasters for Zach. The, those like one in five hundreds. Oh yeah, the color and the sketch so and the partial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, hey, next. So, you know what I want? I want a Jessica Alba variant on a on a Sin City blank cover. Just saying. <laughs> Next okay, so hold got... on. So hold on. I'm getting trashed because I didn't realize that that was somebody else's hand. But that makes no sense because if that guy's hand is coming from the side over this, why is he shooting here? Like he's not even shooting in the right direction. Like, and and first of all, is the guy attacking him? Is he drawing him while he's attacking him? Like, hey, look, I'm right in your face. I'm gonna go ahead and draw you with my hand coming at you. How's he doing that? This cover's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> 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 Next, we have an interesting one. Peg bar. Yes, you read that right. P E G B A R. I don't even want to get into it, but it's called Peg bar. Issue number six. And I specifically put that it's Danny Antonucci cover art. This is from 1987. And this is weird. Did you look at much into this one, Stein? No, I, I literally could not find when you said I can't find a picture of it. I was like, it's because I don't I can't even figure out what this thing is. So I, this I wasn't even 100 percent sure that was the right title. So so this wow. um, is created and the cover the blows this cover. Blows. It's it, it's it was signed by Danny Antonucci and it's limited to 2000 and it, they're numbered and signed Danny Antonucci is the creator of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. The oh, cartoon. Mm -hmm. yep. Nice. Big, big major cartoon on Nickelodeon, I think. Um, yep. He's also I the... Thought, an I, thought from the, I thought that was the dude from the Partridge family. No. <laughs> Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> oh, Bonaducci. Oh, okay, close. And he also has a... Uh, he's an it's animator. like, hurry up, Danny. We need that cover done. All right, motherfucker. Peg bar number one. <laughs> He's an animator for uh, the heavy metal, he heavy metal film. So, and this right here is a super rare book that was put out by the Vancouver Society of Independent Animators. So, very interesting, man. Very weird. Oh man, I'm gonna tra time travel back to 1987 and be like. Oh, see this creator? He's gonna he's gonna make a kids cartoon. Yeah, whatever, Aaron. Do you have any peg bar number ones? <laughs> Hashtag shit nobody says. And that by the city of Vancouver. How much did this sell for? Uh, this sold for a hundred and ten dollars. This is wow. number six. Wow. What are the what are the other issues look like? Well, I think I think this one probably sold for so much because of the connection to the Ed Ed and Eddie guy, right? Yeah. I don't know. Is it just this issue that he did? Well, there is other peg bar stuff. I found this. Peg bar summer of 84, 10 cents. And it's from the van same people hey, that made it. You know it. what? Next time we're at a con. Next time we're at a con, we ought to start some shit by going up to tables. And, hey, do you have that peg bar number one? Right? And just like all of us independently do that. You're just like, you're the third person that asked me, what's going on with that? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I mean, look at this. This is this is issue number two. It looks pretty cool. I mean, it's put out by Canada oh, by it, the government. Oh, this is from this is from Canada. Oh, yeah. That, okay. <laughs> it doesn't count. That doesn't count. I bet you there's a lot we of firsts Canada. in here. Look at this star rats. I bet you there's a star lot rats. of there's a lot of creator firsts in this. I mean, obviously the Antonucci look. There's a lot of drawings of cartoon characters. Topher might be searching this one for the first appearance of some crazy cartoon character that nobody knows about yet. I mean, look at this. This is definitely good stuff to find interesting firsts. And so I can see that. Hold on. What, who? Norman? Good luck, Norman. Who was that? Go back a couple pages. Who was Norman? Him? Norman yeah, McLaren. Good, good luck, Norman. Norman McLaren. 
Retired from the National Film Board of Canada. Oh, good job, the buddy. McLaren, the guy who invented the McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the front cover? There's the back cover. Here's the front cover. Where's the front cover? Oh, like th- there could be <laughs> things sent in by old school comic artists. There's the front cover. Look, Mickey, Scrooge. What's her name again? M- Betty, Betty Boop. Boop. Betty Boop. Uh, Bugs. Uh, Daffy. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. I forget that dude's name. First, I thought that was some dude porking his, somebody else, <laughs> but I don't know <laughs> hey, what it, it is. It just says art. Yeah. It's art. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Peg Bar. I don't know what I couldn't find anything really else other than just a couple of mentions about it but people want that stuff for some reason and it sold for 150 bucks. All right, next. This is badass right here. SpongeBob number 49. Look at that cover, man. Who did this cover? This is dope. I don't I almost put this on the woe list to be 100% <laughs> truthful. This thing is crazy. Hell like, yeah. It looks so real. Um, Bro, that's like Delano did it or something, dude. <laughs> you know? It looks really good. I want, I, I've got to find this book in the wild now. I'm, I'm on full alert to try and find this myself. But uh, Have you looked for SpongeBob books in the wild before? Oh, yeah. It, it is hard to find. It is hard. Uh, like a scent of them like you know wow i yeah. didn't know that no it because I, I was looking for the 340 homage out in the wild yeah like that's on my want list to find in the wild that's the one with like the fork and yeah the, the, the spatula whatever. yeah 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 that's i mean that's look exactly at some of the it. later covers this is a decent cover i mean all these covers are great but some of these are that's a good cover So eighty five, they go up to eighty five, dude. And what was this I've number forty nine? Thousand, uh, yeah, I've said this a thousand times. SpongeBob is literally like, like that. For people just younger than me, I mean, that's all they grew. I mean, they grew up on SpongeBob. Like, even my my six year old is watching SpongeBob. Like, as far as cartoons goes, is SpongeBob like literally probably one of the most like top three most influential cartoons like ever dude some of these covers are really really good I, yeah i could i could see that this one for sure i mean i mean i i even watched spongebob like throughout high school i mean to be fair i was doing drugs while watching it but Look i that one. nonetheless <laughs> like you know it's still goofy enough where it's like kind of like yeah. oh shit yeah that looks like gary painter who's who, who did that I mean, there's I'd, probably I'd say some butthead, right? Probably up there. Yeah. So if you can follow a full run, go for it. Yeah, yeah that's some cool sure. stuff. Yeah, those those book, those book, those books are ghosts, man. You're not gonna find them. I've rarely seen SpongeBob's out in the wild, man. Yeah, it's it's always like two or three random issues, and it's never yeah. the ones you want. And and they're all fucking beat up too. I mean, <laughs> uh, okay. To be fair, I did find. The one that looks like a pre-code horror cover, and it ended up being a newsstand on top of that. Oh, nice! Yeah. How much does this one yeah. sell for? Okay, so this one just sold for twenty dollars, but I literally, like, seriously, I just want this. I, I've, Dude, I need to, awesome. I, I've, I need to find this one for sure. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm gonna start looking for SpongeBob books every time I'm digging, just because Freaking some of those Squidward. Squidward looks so creepy in this thing, right? Oh, I know. Yeah, I, I love the publisher is United Plankton Pictures. That's funny. Yeah. All right, moving on. Being, yeah. This one we've talked about before: Wonder Woman, Agent of Peace, number fourteen, the Jenny Frizen, specific to the city of Burbank, special oh. edition. Um, yeah, okay, so <laughs> this one I had to put on only because of how much it actually sold for. So the last CGC, this, this sold in 9.6, not a 9.8, 9.6. Uh, 
Um, the last nine six sold for like six or seven hundred dollars. It Good sold Lord. for it sold for two thousand this week. Wow. Two thousand dollars for this. Damn. For a nine six. Surprised it wasn't on the hot ten. It's because it's just not many out there. I yeah, I mean I mean, yeah. How many of these are actually there's like one a sale every couple months? Yeah, like that. That. Yeah, oh, yeah. That. It's a, it's some retired city employee that's selling them one at a time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're smart. <laughs> I mean, it, especially if they're grading them. Hey, I've hey. Remember when uh, that what whatever that Iron Man with uh, Shuri or, or or whoever it was? I can't even remember, but um, yeah, the coffee from that one. coffee shop. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Iron Heart. Like, okay, yeah. yeah. It, so you could anybody could do that if they're if they were actually smart you could mm-hmm. you could do your own variant and then just just like don't get greedy sell a few just so people know about it and then just bleed them out every like like four year and nobody will ever yeah. like people will still think it's like ultra rare but you could i mean you could basically just clear all your money over a long period of time if you just were smart about it but, or or yeah. or you could have CGC destroy them for you. <laughs> well, you can do you that. Know? Rafi yeah, says he had the 9-8 hey, that sold. Destroy a thousand of them. Rafi says, I had the 9-8 that sold for seven fifty. Oh, gosh. And look, he's yeah. got the little, he's got the ultra sad face. Like, oh, my but God. But I bet you he was happy <laughs> then. All right. I bet you were happy then, brother. Rafi uh, lives up, up north. So maybe he went to that Burbank Comic Con or something like that. No, so it's it was from a, the city yeah, of Burbank. Statue. It was for like when they uh, had that statue of Wonder Woman. Mm. I think it was to mark uh, that co- uh, occasion or something like that, right? Yep. Uh, uh, Thoreau uh, says r- this was because r- of the Wonder Woman statue built in Burbank, right? Yes. Uh, um, Rafi, is that the only nine eight out available, or is that the only one on the census? He's like, question. I got three more. What's up? <laughs> 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 yep, time to sell no, time to sell the second one. <laughs> yeah, it was a free book. Wow. Yeah, oh, hell yeah, uh, you were happy. I, yeah, I mean you can't really Oh, seven fifty for a free book? Like Hell yeah. All over that. Like, made oh, money. Yeah, Making all, money all you is did winning. Was set the path for someone else to sell yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I, I've done that a hundred times. <laughs> I've always undersold myself. So he says I live in Los Angeles near Burbank, but it was an online giveaway. And he sold oh. the first nine eight, so he set the path. Hmm. You're correct. There are signature series nine eights out there for it, for prison, prison, or Godot, or both. Probably for both. OJ Pinson says or, there's a Jim Lee Burbank Batman cover out there too. Really? Yeah, I'm on DC right now. I found the actual article when they when they were advertising this on March 15th and shows the statue and it has Jim Lee and the, the other creator. I'm, oh, is that Jenny Frizen? I guess. Can you put the yeah. link no. in the private chat? It's Patty. It's Patty Watkins. Uh, Jenkins. Yeah. Oh, the director. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, it's just time for me to go and piss off more people. Um, I just hate. I'm just gonna. I hate Burbank. That they, they don't. They don't deserve their own comics. Just <laughs> send so some dying. comics out here to the Midwest. We don't. We don't need. We don't need Burbank. We don't need California. Doesn't need any of these. There's the statue. So you wouldn't go to a Burbank card show? Nah, I'm not going. Heard, anywhere. I'm not going to really California. <laughs> I heard they're really good though. Hey, it looks like the Selena statue, bro. Richie, how are you not in on this stuff? That's a good statue. That's a dope statue. Because I don't buy exclusives. But it's from your it's like a city. It's a city. Yeah, he said it's online online. Yeah, I know Burbank is only like, you know, technically like 37 miles away. It's like a 45 minute drive. I know traffic, but it's actually like in in mind, it's actually a whole different it's a whole different kind of part of California. So, in well, my mind. So, Joe kind of knows, like, like it took me like oh, an Aaron hour to get did the, the art. To, to Nate's house. It's, you know. What's that? Aaron Lepresti did the interior art. Shout out Lopez. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. Uh, this cover will, be, will feature a brand new 
cover and be available at via Visit Burbank. I don't see the Batman cover though. Interesting. That's very cool, man. That's I love I love seeing shit like that. That's my some of my favorite types of uh collectibles or stuff like that, those promos, those tough to find promos. Mm-hmm. I think we Yo, all Richie, that you stuff. can go on the prices right. That's close enough to you. It's in the same area, probably Universal City, but could could be Burbank, who knows. Shout out to 1234 Yampy for subscribing to House of Stein. We appreciate you. All right. Moving on, we have got That's it for the almost 10. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was, I was man, I was like in full anticipation mode, like, ooh, what's Brian gonna throw in here, dude? This, that was a good almost ten. That's my one of my favorites so far. Yeah, that was excellent stuff. So, uh, you guys come hang out tomorrow night, Beyond Wednesdays for Modern Comic Mayhem. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna talk about yet, but Saturday nights are always fun. We're gonna definitely talk about FOC and who knows else. You never know. But check out the new industry show where we had a really good show on Tuesday night. We do it live every Tuesday. This last Tuesday, we had Nick Barucci on and Emmett from Haven for Heroes Comics. We talked about the whole Mr. Pink uh, thing that uh, Thorough broke about the disgruntled worker at Metropolis and the shilling and Scout Comics and basically just keeping people to higher standards. So go check it out. It's a new show that has started with Jesse James from Jesse James Comics and Dennis Barger from Wonderworld Comics, where we kind of open up uh, everybody to the industry, and you, know, you see a lot of hear a lot of inside baseball talk from those two guys. And it was very cool to have Nick Brucci come on and drop a lot of cool stuff. He, I finally asked him what's the deal with the weird ratio numbers, and he gave a really good answer. That's one of the best answers. He did it all for brick and mortar retailers. He did it all for retailers so they could get a couple extra variants if they bought 10 to 15 instead of having to buy 25 to 50. So there you go. Good stuff. Let's move on to the list. Starting off with our golden age honorable mention Blonde Phantom Comics number 16 from 1947 Marvel. Look at that. Early Marvel comic. Um, yeah, this thing is beautiful. I think it I think I read that it has like some kind of mention of Captain America or something in the book somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. Um, but this is this is gorgeous. Uh I mean, she's got like just the mask, like I first thought she was being like shot on her dress, but those are just flowers. I thought she would like been peppered by the girl with the gun. But what a great no. cover! Holy cow! Who did this cover? Do you know? Um, I don't know who did this cover. Matt Baker. It is not Matt Baker. It is excellent. The only problem is, where's her, the other leg? Oh, it's out the other behind, side. Okay, behind the sign. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad you're putting, you know, Golden Age bonds and red dresses back on the list. Yeah, we should probably stick to that, right? That's a great cover, man. Excellent. It's, it's been a minute since since we've seen that. Um, yeah, so CGC 7.0 of this sold for $2,100. Oh. Ooh, Selden is saying there is a Captain America wow. story. There wow. we go. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's and, cool. and then uh, Liger yes, is I got asking, one. I got one right finally. <laughs> <laughs> is this a is this a timely comics? Yeah. Marvel timely. Same thing. Yeah. Unless people get pissed when I when I say that. I don't know. Sometimes people get pissed. Why? I can't find it. It doesn't say it's Marvel. It says it's timely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do they get mad? I don't know because they're they're, you know, they're pu- they're pussies. Well, they're some people like they <laughs> are Golden Age fans, and they get mad if you say 
Marvel instead of Timely. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they get mad if you grade the books too. So. Yeah, I understand <laughs> no that. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Wow. No. Yeah. There's like a whole like crowd of Golden Age collectors that will buy graded books and crack them. Oh, yep, no shit. I've seen that. Idiots. Well, I don't know. I, I I understand why people don't want their yeah. books graded. I get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, to each their own. Yep. But yep. if I ever get it back, I'm slapping it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's to just our putting next... money back in my pocket, right? At that point. <laughs> to our next honorable mention, Ultimate X Men, issue number one. From Marvel out this week. A very good read. I read it. It was excellent. Um, well, I shouldn't yeah, so... say excellent. I should say it was good. Right, ye? Good. It was good. It yeah. was good. It yeah, was hard I to understand it. until the end, I thought. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. I, it had that nice balance of reading, like, anime and reading uh, a comic book. Like, which is what they're obviously, like, aiming for. And Momoko's so, art be was good. Let's be honest here. The story was average, but the interior art is so good, it makes it like, oh wow, this is. And the end, the end is really good because they explained all those cool little Japanese legends, and seeing armor as a jap as a samurai is badass. And they do some really cool variant covers with armor as a samurai. I love that that moment when armor came out and smashed the entity dude. I was like, oh, dude, that's badass. Oh, did, Richie, did you say that the interior art is good? Isn't this Peach Momoko? Yeah, it's I, not bad. No, yeah, dude. I think that it, it, it it's works actually, for it's very good. manga-ish. It, yeah, so I, that's why I'm saying it has that nice balance of manga and comic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and so, like, I feel like once graphic novels come out of this, like, mm-hmm. manga readers are going to, like, latch onto it and then, like, Mm. If they choose, I feel like it might happen where it's like kind of like, oh, I want to get the individual issues. Right. I mean, why else would it be going already to like what third, fourth print or something crazy wow. like that? Wow. How much are these selling for on the secondary market right now? Um. So obviously, you know, Ultimate Spider Man, they were selling crazy. Then Ultimate Black Panther, they were okay. Yeah. Now this one's kind of, you know, everybody's, nobody's surprised. Um, so there's probably plenty of copies. They're only selling for like ten bucks. So, so they are selling above, you know, cover, but you know, a bunch bunch of soul. But it's not like this is like, oh, I've got to go out and clean the shelves, you know, like Ultimate Spider Man was. Yeah, um, good call. You know, which is you know, which is typical. Uh, you know, for really for any trend, we're comic people are way reactionary, and. Uh, once one thing gets hot, they think all things are going to get hot, but that never happens. So, um, yeah, some of the variants were, were excellent, but they definitely didn't sell crazy on the secondary. They were underperforming yep. big in a big way, but who knows? Maybe, maybe more, uh, people will find out that it's decent and it'll, you know, hit a little bit of, uh, some heat. Here it is on the honorable mention. All right, moving on to number 10 spot this week, Weapon X-Men, number one, the John Boy Myers Virgin 1 in 100 variant. If Wolverine in his uh, Apocalypse, uh, what is it, Age of Apocalypse? Yeah. yeah, Wolverine. Oh, where he's so, missing like a hand too, right? He's missing a hand, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to talk about this book after we talk about the numbers, if that's okay. Just I, I built some slides just to let you know. So this is a variant, obviously, of Wolverine. And uh, I saw sales on here. There wasn't that many sales. There was, I think, was only three or four sales since, I think, uh, the beginning of this month all through the week. And especially the last couple of days, selling between $149.99 to $199. I don't know. Ben probably took a deeper look at it and got an average, but uh, I was actually really surprised. I like this cover a lot, uh, but the thing is, is that there are tons of these on the. No, I wouldn't say tons, but there's at least like there's multiple on the online retailer level on on my comic shop, Big Town, and I don't have any affiliation 
none of us do it with them, but you can get them a lot cheaper than the secondary market. Um, I saw one for $87 that they listed for like uh, fine VF and usually they kind of undergrade their, their new books, but I, I, I couldn't see an image all the way up to, I think near mint copies for $125. So if this thing is, ends up continuously ascending to $200 plus, it might not be the worst thing to uh, make a decision uh, and grab one for 87 to a hundred bucks. That's just my opinion. So you like this cover, Richie? Oh yeah. I like this cover a lot. I just, I just didn't, I, I don't know. It's just, um, so I, I, I built some slides and this is, uh, if you could, can you add those? Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, here's my thumbnail for Monday. Don't forget to sub up 800 subscriber giveaway for me and Aaron and uh ronnie but here we go so this is your first okay so there's a first appearance first full appearance in the book um we're talking about here weapon x-men number one it's jane howlett okay and it's a female version of of wolverine her actual first cameo is in a book that dropped like two weeks ago called women women of marvel so i wanted to show you guys that she's on the bottom um right there and here's a closer look that's her right there. So that's her first cameo, just in case. It's just a one page. I read the whole thing. There's multiple stories. That's Madame Webb in the middle. And then they're like reading her mind. So she's got all this stuff in her mind. And then that that's her. So moving on, here's her on the cover um, with uh, Weapon X Logan for what Brian was saying, the uh, X-Men Alpha stuff, the apocalypse stuff. And uh, so you get her on the cover here. And she's also on the 1 in 25, which in my opinion is is – for lack of a better word, is very Kevin Eastman-y. And uh, moving on, so here's the cover we're talking about. This guy's first appearance. So, okay, I get it. A whole <laughs> variant thing and different and different universes and all this. But this character is special to me because he's got the one hand, like Aaron was saying. His first appearance, here he is again. There's uh, Jane Hallett. His first appearance is in this book right here x-men mm -hmm. alpha number one it's like a 90s book and there's like five different covers it's probably mass produced in in uh direct edition but there's this one it's kind of like a foil metal um a gimmick cover he's on the cover there's one here that's uh limited to 1500 that was signed by the creators and then there's the newsstand as well now here is the reprint that came out uh, a year later. I don't know if you'd call this a second print or a reprint, but it doesn't have that gimmick cover and there's just not a lot of these out there. So I, I thought this was actually pretty cool to talk about and moving on. Don't forget to subscribe to spec media YouTube channel. We're doing three giveaways. Thanking you to get it, uh, getting us to 800 and we're going to do a giveaway on the 900 and we're going to do a mass giveaway at a thousand. Not before we get there, after we get there, because we want to thank you guys. We appreciate it. There we go. That's good stuff, Richie. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah. That's fire, dude. So there you nice go. Job, First appearance of Jane Howlett, huh? Yeah. I, I know how Ben feels. That was, I thought you were going to say that was her on the cover. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that, that, you know, when she took uh, <laughs> some, some testosterone. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh man, a sponsor just like told me that they have to drop me now. Uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> man, R R Richie went fucking old school right there, bro. Fucking. Uh... Did. All oh, right. I just wanted to add, add like a man. little excitement. That's all. I thought it was Dude, interesting. Dude, fucking chills, bro. That was good stuff. <laughs> number <laughs> nine bags. spot this week. Crazy. Issue number one, the Todd Knock one in twenty five. This is from twenty nineteen, you guys. Little foreshadowing okay, so, there. Yeah. So what is up with this? It's is it's it just because it's Wolverine and Deadpool? It no, it's like a it's a it's a under ordered book and we talked about this on long story short. Yeah. So uh, y'all are breaking y'all are breaking the rules still. So, but this yeah, we talked about it like months ago. You're saying it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one had this one had multiple CGC nine eight sales of this, and they were they were three fifty for this. Wow. Yeah, uh, you got a, you got a one shot that was way under ordered on a one in twenty five. I remember because I pre ordered this book, and um, when long story short, I watched that episode when they talked about it. I was like, oh hell yeah. 
I didn't go digging. I, I have it somewhere. But long story short, no pun intended. Um, you got, you know, Deadpool, Wolverine coming. So I, I think people are just hunting something rare. And the fact that um, Long Short Ben brought this to and Aaron brought this to everybody's attention, maybe it just could have, uh, you know, excited people. So, is this actually uh, Deadpool or is this Lady Deadpool? Um, I ooh, think it's actually. Question. Okay, I'm only I'm I'm just looking at one part. Of it. It looks I thought like it was Lady Deadpool. Deadpool. I, okay, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm, just looking, actually... I'm just looking at the drawing and it looks like Lady Deadpool. I'm just. I don't see any uh, boobs on that cover. And I don't see long hair. Does he have a camel oh. toe? Yeah, I was gonna say. Does, does, does he have a camel toe? <laughs> Maybe a moose moose knuckle. Yeah. And an and a that, twelve. Yeah, pack. that would mean Lady Deadpool. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many stomach. No, no, they just all the way to his neck. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is a pump and dump for me because I own all the copies from the senses. I have zero copies. <laughs> yeah, this is not a pump and dump. This is just uh, this is information because this book, this book was. I, I like this cover, and there's just not a lot of copies out there. Mm. All right. Number eight spot this week. Another book that uh, is back on the list uh, from being here before. Invincible Iron Man number 15, the 1 in 25 variant. Yeah, I, I watched you guys. I heard you guys talking about this last week that you were like, it's good, but not like like you're, you mm -hmm. didn't love it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of like it. I mean, because like, I mean, she's one why is she out in like smallville like kansas area yeah, the farm area like. i mean like she's just flying out in the middle of nowhere um is that emma frost no it's the new is it a new character oh. am mm. i wrong I and think the only, i thought the only first in here was the armor but i could can so, can somebody in the chat tell me how to pronounce the artist name is that DK DK Ruan. That's what I was. I was just at, <laughs> dude. I was Brian and I were talking on the phone. We were doing the list last week, and I told I asked the same thing to Brian. I'm all, it, you say a DK or the other way? I want to make sure. <laughs> oh, we are like, trying to get canceled this week, aren't we? Hey, we're just. <laughs> hey, I'm just calling everybody out this week. I mean, it's just it, it's just fun, but um, <laughs> so <laughs> last week. This was selling for thirty. Now it's up to forty to fifty. So it's it's doing better now than it was last week. Nice. We had this on the list last week. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, to me, the cover is kind of forgettable. I think that's why I don't care for it. I mean, a fifteenth issue on an Invincible Iron Man fifteen one and twenty five. It's very underordered. Yeah. yeah. Low print run on this one. What's it selling for? Eighty, you said? Uh, no, forty to fifty. Forty to fifty. Oh, so that's up. That's up, right, Brian? Yep. Yeah, this was See, selling that's for That's why ratio. you can't win with the show, man. Like somebody has this book, and they're all like, "Fuck yeah, dude, my book's on the list." And the fucking you, yeah, but the cover's fucking forgettable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ye is so. You're like, well, what the fuck? Cake. Why is it on the list? <laughs> God damn it, ye! <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on to next on the list the number nine spot harley quinn issue number 37 the fui mara one in 50 which was the honorable mention last week because there wasn't very many of these sold and there still hasn't been a whole lot of them sold but my goodness um and i don't think there was even any available for sale um really? yep. there was yeah, only two available yeah, now these are selling for like two to three hundred. Woo! No I, way! Wow! I think this cover Midtown, is awesome. Midtown had it up till like release day mm. for like one sixty or something like that. Yeah. One thirty somewhere in there. Crazy! This yeah. cover is in amazing. Mm -hmm. So is this DC uh, zombies? Like, is that their answer to Marvel Zombies? No, they already no did idea. that. It was called Deceased. Oh, this okay. is just a scary right. cover. You're right. That's right. Yeah. So, Ben, do you think this has cover the year material? Like, because someone asked me in the chat. Uh, I, like, I don't yeah. like it. 
I don't think it's you that know good. it is it is so different than like what we think of Harley now, like because of you know Margot Robbie and all you know cutesy and yeah, this is whatever. not this is not that at all, right? Um, it's I don't know. It's just it's so freakish looking that I just can't stop looking at it. Dude, it's, it's like borderline crack horror, bro. Yeah, it it, it gives me more like joker's daughters vibe than anything yeah more than for than, sure than harley harley on fentanyl dude. <laughs> harley can't get fentanyl <laughs> oh yeah patrick mill says he wishes there was uh blood on the mallet that would be that would be the... oh oh yeah but that could add to it like having but, a blood splatter version or something like that but would dc allow that well, you could get it remarked. You yeah, know. just get the artist to remark it like that. <laughs> he put blood on the mallet, please. <laughs> like, could you just put blood splatter all over this cover? You could get any artist to do that, honestly. Put, what, to put their own blood on there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, then you could get a PSA DNA certified. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah, there you I'm go. surprised like Melinda's Comics yeah, isn't blood. offering that yet, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a creepy book for sure. I love it. I I love books. I I love books that when you look at them, you're like, wow, that is way different. Hell yeah, crazy. All right, number eight, number six spot. Sorry, number six spot this week. Giant size Spider Gwen number one, the Betsy Cola one in twenty five, which we talked about last night, and we said this is going to be a super hot book. But there was just something about it that uh, was a little off to me. I mean, uh, it's you can you know it's going to be a hot book though. Yeah, but that fucking arm is freaky, dude. Is that what it is? It is it the arm? Yeah, it's a fucking like, dude. Looks like man hands, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. It looks like Miss Marvel's hands from one of the other covers. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's got like a dude's hand, dude. I like how she's got the guitar though. I think that's cool. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. they're in a oh, band. Oh, because of the Mary Janes. Yeah. In the band. Yeah. Good call. And it has the Mary Janes flyer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, could yeah. it be like, could it be the perspective where it's taking the, uh, like, fish lens view or whatever? And so it throws stuff out of proportion. Yeah. That's Maybe. possible. Yeah. Yeah. But it does, it does have that same. Uh, feel as like uh, Teen Titan seventy five, the Hughes cover mm-hmm. with Starfire's hand, like that that hand just just kills the cover. Yeah, like it's done. Mm-hmm. I I love the cover, but the hand just can't see anything else. <laughs> Man, what's this selling for in the secondary? Uh, thirty five to forty. So yeah, like okay sales, but not like oh my gosh, we got to go out. This one's going to be a two hundred dollar book. I, yeah, good call. Yeah, I agree. All right, number five spot this week. Ultimate Spider-Man number one, the Kaketo third print version, one in twenty-five. <laughs> mm. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. This book is yeah. just too hot, man. You, I'm listen. I know it's a third print, one in twenty-five, but. This Ultimate Spider-Man number one book is on fire, no matter what it is. Okay, so all right, so remember when um, Edge of Spider-Verse two came out and they went to all those printings? The third print, remember, it was completely different. They went with the yeah. the, the design, the, the design, the, the design variant. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Why did? Why? I mean, we've seen this image like every like we keep seeing the same image. Why can't they just do it? Just if you're gonna do this, just do a different image. Make it, make it. Right. I don't, I don't need right. this image again. Right. But you need it in every single co- costume, and then like every single iteration where it's like trade dress, <sighs> virgin. You know, I can't wait for the sketch one to come out. Was there a store like, variant there... that that did this cover like a virgin? No, this no was idea. the one in. 100 what was this this was a this was a cover it looks, yeah it was yeah they did this with the black suit and then the that's right yeah thought. it was like a yeah. it, it was like a b or c cover right or something like that yeah yeah no this was cover a 
This was no. Cabaret. Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're thinking oh, of it's without the, it's without the white you're thinking parts. Of ben Riley one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's it, without it's, that. It's without the trade, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, this one's selling for fifty to sixty. Um, yeah, for a, for a one in twenty five. There you go. Yeah. All right, moving on. Number four yeah. spot this week. Power Girl number six, the Panosian one in twenty five, still on the list. So you, so I got the feeling that you guys like this cover, right? Oh, bro. Yeah. No. I wish I owned it. So are you, are you gonna ruin it for us? I'm not gonna ruin it. It's oh dang, I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're so you bad. Fupa, bro. Oh, yeah, who, was... who, else I, who else do I need to offend tonight? Uh, He's got a so fupa. Oh. Got a fupa. <laughs> <laughs> um, Looks like she's got a fucking cock in there, dude. What, what are you talking about? What? Look at that pooch. Look well, at the fupa. Maybe you. Maybe, maybe you're oh, yeah. yours, but nobody else. Yeah, but... exactly. <laughs> Um, no, this one's good. Uh, last I'm week it was so last week it was selling for like 45 to 50. Now it's up to 80 to 90. Oh, wow. Um, guns, and I can boobs. see this. I can see this one hanging around for quite some time. She has a 12 pound pump pump. <laughs> Would you put this in the top five power girl covers? Mm, that's a tough one. I'd have to. There's not that many Power Girl covers, though. That's the thing. Is like, oh, uh, her. You know, she has yeah. kind of limit limited choices. Right. That's so, that's why it's shortened from ten. <laughs> I I think this is uh, cover of the year category for sure. No doubt about it. No, nah, it's a great it's a great cover. Yeah. 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 So before, mad at me. before we get into the top three, I want to talk about a book that. People have been talking about in the chat for a while. I've heard a lot of people reach out, but it's not on the list this week, and I'm gonna, we're going to want to talk about it, and that being Wolverine number 36, that Helverine book, which we've had on the list. We had on the list, I think, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Um, it, it, did you see the sales on that, and what was your feelings on that? It just wasn't selling for more than what it was? Yeah, it was about the same. It was still like in the 60... Yeah, 60 50. to 70 range is what yeah, which is what we had it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's so that's what I want to remind everybody is that Stein does a really good job of making sure that if he's gonna put a book on the list again, it's gotta be selling for more than it was when it was on before. So, you know, that book is selling and uh, obviously it's because that Marvel thinks that it, they can sell a few more issues on a new series with that character. So it's still selling, but only for about 53 uh 65 so you know 60 it's selling like you said stein for the same amount that it was which 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 is still way more like i i completely dismissed that book like when it was selling for 25 30 i'm like i have never spent 25 to 30 dollars on this book right yeah Yeah, Yeah. yep all right Let's get into it, you guys. The top three spots on the House of Stein Hot 10 Comics list. Number three, Grunge Comics, number one, from First Amendment Publishing in 1994. So there must there must be a, a, a signing or something, because I don't know why this book is selling. <laughs> what, from the grave? <laughs> I don't, you need I don't it for know. the seance to, to communicate with him <laughs> i don't i don't know what's going on this this is okay so <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, Is CGC going to be there, bro? Oh, Oh, my God. Somebody, somebody. Does it come with a shotgun? Dude, look what up to down. Look what up to down just said. Look what up to down just said. Um, um, I don't know what's going on. This was like a $25 to $30 book. This 
this book sold 17 copies this week at 60 to 75 dollars what is going on Jeez. somebody must it have is, talked about this on a show somewhere i imagine and uh, isn't it the anniversary of his death like well here's what what's very interesting a lot of people don't know this but um <laughs> kurt cobain drew all the covers for um all their albums did you guys know this so he also drew comics when he was a kid. This is a uh, in his one of his diaries, and he he was a big comic person. Pretty crazy, right? Look at that, Mister Mustache, oh, Mustache. So he, he drew this cover for Incesticide or created it in 1992. He also did one of the greatest covers of all time, cover arts in my opinion of all time, in Utero. He did the artwork for that. So he was big into comics, man, and he did a lot. This is another comic in his diary, Burn Man. So I always thought it might be, it would be interesting to know if, like, there's anything published out there that has any of his art in it, other than his, you know, albums and stuff like that. So oh, uh, look at that, dude. Didn't, didn't they publish some of his journals? Like where it's like yeah they did like, in that in that Nirvana they put it out what's her name put it out uh, uh Courtney, Courtney, Love. Courtney Love yeah yeah they published the journals yeah so I I don't know man I just thought that was very cool like all these the the art and stuff that he did uh, this yeah. was in his diary too here and you can read all of these when they what's her name published all his diaries it's really weird I remember when that came out. And um, one of my best, uh, my buddy Keith, who's you guys know, my best friend, I do the podcast with. He is a huge Nirvana fan, and I remember him telling me that reading those diaries felt so it felt icky. It felt like, like kind of gross, well, you know. Really? Well, because of someone's like private thoughts and everything, like you don't expect that to be published to the world to yeah. read, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was doing some trying to do some research on this to find out what was going on, and that came up, and I thought it was very interesting. You know that he did the art for those, yeah. so we'll have to we'll have to do some deep diving and stuff to see if there's anything with published art other than his, you know, in a comic book form or a magazine form. I think that'd be interesting. But somebody had to have talked to this on a show or something. Uh, yeah. I, I imagine that brought this up because up to down. What did oh, he sorry, say? Go ahead. Right. He, he said, said that the 30th anniversary of the death is coming up here. Okay. In, in less okay. Than okay. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, so I was right on that. Oh, yeah. Montage of heck. That's yeah. I remember montage of heck. That was crazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. So the, yeah, somebody had to have said something on a show about this, maybe talking about, you know, the, the thing coming up and, yeah, you know, yeah, that well, happens I mean, all the time. We know, we see man. that, we see that happen all the time. Uh, you know, we saw it, we see it probably weekly with uh, Mr. Long Short with uh, Long Story Short. So, yeah, I could see this blowing up because somebody's like, "Oh, his his death is coming up. Let's take a look at his com comics that talk about Nirvana." Yeah, yeah. man. Well, I mean, so many bands are doing like 30th anniversaries, you know, 25th, whatever, and. I would assume this, you know, all falls in that category, right? That's a crazy yeah. cover, too. It's the best cover of all the comic book ones. There's another one that they did that has all three of them on the cover, but this one's a really creepy cover. It would have been cooler with the sunglasses. I think that the highest graded copy is a 9.6, too, right? There's there's no nine eights on the census. Am I wrong about that? Um, you guys, I'd be right. I don't know. Yeah, I think Aaron probably right. has the census up. Yeah, I, I'm pulling it up right now. <laughs> yeah. How many of these sold? There's like a ton of them. You said seventeen. Wow. Like at double I'm, the double the going or? Yeah, I was I was like, what is going on? Yeah. And yeah, Ryan, it does feel like a lifetime, but it was. I mean, it was thirty years ago. It's, I mean, I was, I was in college. His daughter and, just married um, Tony uh, Hawk's daughter, uh, son. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the highest is a nine six. You want to guess how many are graded? Yeah, uh, I would say Ten. five. Ten. 
six. That was close. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. It, it's it goes nine six, nine four, nine two, nine zero, oh, eight five, and then all the way down to a seven. Ah, crazy. And and then the the copy that Stein got signed. <laughs> Uh, some... <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm just. I'm gonna be getting so much hate mail. <laughs> I can't wait to read the com. We need to bring back the segment where we like review the comics at the their comments at the end of the show. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I missed that. That was a good segment. I like that. Segment. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to number two spot this week. Spider Boy issue number four, the Ramos one in one hundred Virgin variant. You got a new character in this issue. Not the not, no 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 not the right issue. It's the not comics the right pro. Issue. It's the comics pro one. Yeah, okay. not the one in the hundred. The comics. Okay, pro. hold on. Let me go find that before we talk about it. Which is this exact image? Just you know, it's slightly com- different. Comics proed. Where they do mm. like most of it in to... black, black and white with the, and then the you gotta have the logo on there. It's not official without the logo, right? Right. So Spider Boy number four. When did, did didn't Comics Pro used to always be in like the Pacific Northwest? I thought it was like, I I thought it was in Colorado one year. It's it was like in pennsylvania this year or something like <laughs> pittsburgh like, why is it pennsylvania i always thought it was like on the west coast somewhere west I thought coast, too. So, like, so it's black like, and white I, that's the only difference uh-huh i mean i uh-huh. think it has it i think it has a trade dress too i think yeah shout out to edwin aguilera uh I went to allude to what brian said new character boy spider yeah that what a shitty a name fun. <laughs> that took a lot of thought. <laughs> yeah. New character called Boy Spider in this one. Ugh. Oh, but they added the trade to it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's all the exclusives, <laughs> by the way. Let's take a quick look. So, you've got the Space Ghost. I don't know what that is. Displaced Uncanny Valley. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, all, all the. That's badass. Tony Fleece book right there. Um, nice. and there's that uncanny value valley one. Those will those will be big books you watch. They did the feral. Tony Fleece had a ton of books at Comics Pro. Jesus. The Return of the Power Power Girl. This is uh, Lilo and Stitch. Is that Trish? Didn't they redo that cover? I'm Isn't not sure. Uh-huh. Man's Best Jill Battle Quest. The Thundercats one, which is the. For, is it a foil? Is that is that a foil of the Rob Liefeld f- for the Thundercats for Comics yeah. Pro? What's that yes. selling at? Uh, like thirty, I think, because I did see that too. There was there was there was a few of those. Uh, There's another Liefeld one too. Yeah, that sold. Yeah, the Jay Lee. Um, there wasn't as many sales of that one. Yeah. So this one is only. Uh, it's just they just changed the to black and white on that cover. So what's this selling for, the Spider Boy? Seventy-five to a hundred. Wow. I kind of like the color splash. A lot better than the other one. Yeah, I don't mind color splashes sometimes. But hold on, is that the hold on, look at the back cover. Is that what the Comics Pro that's a different logo? Yeah. Yeah, they changed their logo, yeah. I, I miss that weird font where it looks like it's from like IBM or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Yep. So there you go. All right. Moving on at the number one spot, ladies and gentlemen, Ultimate Spider Man issue number two. No, that's not it. Ultimate Spider Man issue number two, the Chichetto. Kaketo Comics Pro variant. There we go. Yeah, so they just did the exact same thing with this as they did with Spider Boy, um, mm-hmm. except for the 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 color splash is strictly on it. Is he just called Green Goblin, or what do they call him in this? Ultimate Green Goblin. 
I think <laughs> I don't remember them calling me any different. Um, in sixteen ten, he was Ultimate Green Goblin, so it's the same guy. So I haven't read any of this. No, so this they, is sixteen thirty four. Something like that. Like when Green Goblin says, "Hey, Spider Man," does he say, "Hey, Ultimate Spider Man"? Does he call him Ultimate? <laughs> 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 no that's a good uh the ultimate uh green goblin from the uh miles morales run the 1610 one he looked different he was like had it he was huge yeah. so he's mm. a good guy in this world supposedly oh really okay mm -hmm. hmm he still looks bad uh <laughs> it, is it someone this else too i can't remember if they revealed who it was no, it's the same. Mary, person, it's Mary I Jane. Think. No, I think it's the same person. <laughs> I could be wrong. I I don't remember them saying anything. Yeah, I don't think they've revealed it yet. Yeah. I need to read issue two again, or I don't even know if I read issue two. Yeah. Uh, this one, <laughs> this one is selling for one fifty to one eighty. Wow. Wow. Jeez. That's crazy, That's man. Crazy. Up to down says Green Goblin was revealed to be a girl spider. To be girl spider. So I was right. Again. What? Man. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. That's what she said, Derek. I mean, Kevin. <laughs> and then now they're kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it, that's not true. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now I'm wrong again. Yeah. Dang it! And then Kevin says they said it's Harry. Yeah, it's Harry. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So not bad. Not bad sales on that. That's probably the most of all the Comics Pro variants, then. Right. Don't attack yeah. me, Stein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's fight. Come on, I'm ready to fight tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah, because whenever we meet at a con, <laughs> we're going to fist fight in the parking lot. Instead, <laughs> <laughs> every YouTuber ever. <laughs> and then did mm -hmm. nothing about it. <laughs> and it was funny as if I ever actually tried to get into a fight, I think I would just laugh. The whole time, you're like, "What are we doing? We look ridiculous." It's too old to do that. <laughs> well, that was a good show, ladies and gentlemen. Two hours. We're back to our two-hour show, where I can ask what everything sells for after every. <laughs> so I, uh, I was thinking about that. So I watched the last two weeks, and I'm like, "You guys were doing like an hour and ten, and then like an hour and 30 I'm like, "It's me. It. I must be like." really like a blowhard like i'm just randomly puffing minutes into these shows like i need to stop. yeah you just talk so much shit on these books bro <laughs> apparently <laughs> yeah <laughs> the only guy at renny vision well him kyle sam and i like dom are the only three guys at renny vision that are worth anything the rest are all content thieves working for cowards and that is the hot 10 this week. We end it with Stein. See ya.